Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 17, leçon D. And in this lesson, we'll see together les verbes pronominaux and uh, we'll actually try to see whether it's possible to see one form or two forms, okay? So, une forme ou deux formes. So, let's start now. And so when we're talking about les verbes pronominaux, actually, we'll have, we will have several situations. The first one will be that, actually, these verbs will only exist at this form pronominal. So it does mean that it, it won't exist at this other form non pronominal. Okay, so we'll see that. The second situation is that, uh, well, the two forms will exist, whether the pronominal and the non pronominal. And in, in these cases, well, actually, the meaning won't be that different. And the last situation, you will have the two forms existing, so pronominal and non-pronominal, but then the meanings will be quite different. Okay, so we'll start first with this situation when we've got only one form, la forme pronominale. Okay, so for example, we take this verb, se souvenir de and it's quite interesting because well many students tend to make the mistake in a way when they want to use souvenir well they use souvenir without using this se so actually they would like it to be non pronominal and unfortunately for you it doesn't exist so actually souvenir like that doesn't exist and if you want to use this verb you've got to use it with ce, so it will be la forme pronominale, okay? A few examples like s'absenter, s'écrouler, s'effondrer, se moquer, se méfier, s'enfuir, s'en aller. Okay, so in all these cases, actually, these verbs exist only with se before them, so pour la forme pronominale. Okay, so let's see now the meanings. S'absenter, s'écrouler, s'effondrer, se moquer, se méfier, s'enfuir, s'en aller. Okay, so you've got here the translations, and keep in mind that if you want to use them, you will have to use them with se, and then of course it will modify the way that you conjugate them. We've been seeing that previously, so you can check the previous videos about that. Okay? S'abstenir, s'efforcer de, s'envoler, se soucier, se souvenir, and that's it. Okay, so, s'abstenir, s'efforcer de, s'envoler, se soucier, se souvenir. Okay, so it will be exactly the same situation. These verbs only exist, or they are only used as verbes pronominaux, so with this se before them, and they don't exist without it. Okay, so let's see now the second situation. So, deux formes. So, they exist with or without se. So, pronominal et non pronominal. And then the meaning is not really different. Let's take this example. So, the verb, the verb attendre. Okay, and then the verb s'attendre à. So, s'attendre à means to expe expect, yes. And then attendre is to wait. So, clearly... You can see that the meaning doesn't change that much. Le sens change peu. And then, la préposition peut changer, because you can see here that, of course, we've got the preposition a, okay? And we don't really have it right here, okay? S'attendre à, an example. Je m'attends à recevoir un appel. So it's actually, and then, J'attends le train de 15 heures. Okay, so in that case, well, it will mean to expect. And then in that case, it will mean to wait. Okay, je m'attends à recevoir un appel. So I expect to receive a call. And then j'attends le train de 15 heures. Well, I expect the train that will arrive at 15 heures. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so let's check now. S'attendre à, and then attendre. Another one. Je m'attends à une belle surprise. Oh, then it would be possible also to use attendre like that. J'attends d'avoir une belle surprise. So it would be possible to express almost the same idea without using this uh, form pronominal. Okay. That's it. So now, if you want to use, uh, well, some verbs, sorry, some verbs will have two forms, as I said, so the, the two forms will exist, but then, strangely, the meaning will change, and actually, uh, these two verbs will look, uh, look alike, but then the meaning will be really, really different. Uh, well, an, an example like s'apercevoir and apercevoir here, okay, so s'apercevoir will mean to notice, and then apercevoir, to catch sight of, okay, so le sens change totalement, so the meaning uh, changes quite much, okay, and then la préposition peut changer, not in that case, but then, well, preposition might change uh, when you put that, whether at the form pronominal or non pronominal, okay, so we'll see a few verbs now, agir, s'agir de Aller, s'en aller, apercevoir, s'apercevoir de, attendre, s'attendre à, douter, se douter de, ennuyer, s'ennuyer, entendre, s'entendre avec. Ok, so I, let's see now the translations. Agir. S'agir de, okay, so I will respect exactly the same order for the translations, okay, so it will be agir, it's to act, and then s'agir de, to be about, okay, so it will be exactly the same for the, the other verbs. Aller, s'en aller, apercevoir, s'apercevoir de, attendre, s'attendre à, douter, se douter de, ennuyer, s'ennuyer, Entendre, s'entendre avec. Faire, se faire à. Imaginer, s'imaginer. Mettre, se mettre à. Passer, se passer de. Plaindre, se plaindre de. Plaire, se plaire à. Prendre, s'y prendre. Let's see now the translations. Faire, se faire à, imaginer, s'imaginer, mettre, se mettre à, passer, se passer de, plaindre, se plaindre de, plaire, se plaire à, prendre, s'y prendre. Servir, se servir, tromper, se tromper, trouver, se trouver, and that's it. Servir, se servir, tromper, se tromper, trouver, se trouver. Okay, so remember that, well, we can have an example here now. S'apercevoir de, and then apercevoir, je m'aperçois de mon erreur. And then, j'aperçois un bateau sur la mer, okay? So in these two cases, actually, the first one, s'apercevoir, will actually be translated by to notice, okay? And then, here, j'aperçois un bateau sur la mer, to catch sight of, okay? So as you can see, well, of course, they look the same because you get apercevoir and s'apercevoir, but then the meaning is really, really different, okay? So keep in mind that it's possible when we talk about le verbe pronomino to have only one form or then to have two forms, okay, pronominal and non-pronominal, and then the meaning will be almost the same, okay, and then it's also possible to have these two forms with total, uh, totally different meanings uh, when it comes to uh, the form pronominal and non-pronominal. Ok, I hope it was clear. Have a great day. Au revoir et à bientôt. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 17, leçon E.
And in this lesson, we'll work together on les verbes pronominaux and more precisely, les verbes pronominaux réfléchis. Okay, so les verbes pronominaux réfléchis. Okay, so we'll see in the coming videos uh, other type of uh, verbs, uh, les verbes pronominaux. Okay, but this one will focus on les verbes pronominaux réfléchis. And we can start right now. So what are les verbes pronominaux réfléchis? And it's a good question. So let's imagine that we've got the subject. So the subject will be me. And well, the idea of this uh, verbe pronomino uh, réfléchi is that if I do something, so I will do une action, well, I will do it on myself, okay? And that, that's the whole concept of these uh, verbes pronomino réfléchis, okay? So I'm doing something and I'm doing th something on myself. Okay, so let's see now a few examples of verbes pronominaux réfléchis. The first one, se laver. Se lever. Se peigner. Se parfumer. Se raser. Se maquiller. Okay, so all these verbs are in this categories a category of les verbes pronominaux réfléchis. So let's see now what they mean, and now it will be probably more clear for you. So se laver is here. Se lever. Se peigner. Se parfumer. Se raser. Se maquiller. Okay, so you can see that in all these cases, actually, when we're talking about, well, the verbs, uh, well, if I say je me lave, well, clearly I am washing myself. Okay, so that's the whole concept. So the subject is doing an action on itself. Okay, so let's see now another series of verbs. S'amuser. Se brosser les dents. Se coucher, s'habiller, se déshabiller, se regarder. Okay, so let's see now the meanings, the translations. S'amuser, se brosser les dents, se coucher, s'habiller. Se déshabiller, se regarder. Okay, so now that you have an idea of what these verbes pronominaux réfléchis are, let's see how we will conjugate them and we'll start with the present form. Je me lave, tu te laves. Il, elle se lave. Nous nous lavons. Vous vous lavez. Il, elle se lave. Okay, so you can see that, well, actually, laver or se laver in that case is a regular verb. It belongs to the first group. So you've got the normal endings that we have for the present form. Okay, and keep in mind that as it's a verb pronominal, as we say, you will have to add this thing for je, so je me lave, okay, just to express that you are doing the action on yourself, je me lave, then tu te laves, il se lave, and then elle se lave, okay, then nous Nous lavons, vous vous lavez, il, elle se lave. Okay, so it's actually, it's not that difficult. You should just definitely remember that you should put these little things, you know, here, 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 and here. So let's see now for the passé composé form. Je me suis lavé, tu t'es lavé. 
il, elle s'est lavé, nous nous sommes lavés, vous vous êtes lavés, ils se sont lavés, elles se sont lavées. Okay, so uh, what we can see here is that, well, you get your subject, then you put me here, and then remember that because we are talking about a verb pronominal, we should use at the passé composé form être and not avoir. And as we use être, then we should put at the end the feminine if needed. Okay, so that's the reason why it's like that. So, je me suis lavé, and then if it would be the feminine form, then you should add this e at the end, but then phonetically it doesn't exist, you don't pronounce it, so it would be exactly the same form phonetically, je me suis lavé. Okay, same thing here, tu t'es lavé, okay, and the feminine here, possible as well. Il s'est lavé, so if you use this il, of course, you, you should keep the masculine form, and then if you get elle, which is the feminine, you should put this uh, at the end. Elle s'est lavé. Okay, here there is a little mistake, sorry, I didn't put uh, uh as an option, but it, it could be here as well and here as well, okay, because nous could be a group of women, and in that case you should put the feminine form, of course. Nous nous sommes lavés. So remember, final S is not pronounced. Vous vous êtes lavé, okay, and then ils se sont lavés, elles se sont lavés. So exactly the same thing. You put this E uh, as an option. So if you've got il, you don't put it. And if you've got elle, so the feminine plural form, you should put it here. Keep in mind that when we're talking about the pronunciation, whether it's the masculine singular form like that, so it's lavé. If you've got the feminine form, it will be lavé as well. If you've got the plural form, it's lavé. And then if you get the plural and the feminine or feminine plural, it's lavé. So clearly, phonetically, you get only one form and it's lavé. Okay? So it's quite important to remember if you want to write and if you don't want to make any mistakes to put the E uh at the end for the feminine form and then to put the S for the plural form but if you only want to uh, speak French then it's actually quite easy because you've got only one form okay and it's lavé. Important thing it is possible to add what we call complément d'objet direct after the verb. Okay, so even if you've got this verb pronominal réfléchi, so you are doing the action to yourself, it is possible to put un complément d'objet direct after the verb. Okay, so we'll see how it goes. For instance, if you've got the sentence il se lave, okay, it is possible to use il se lave, and then you want to be more precise because you want to say what parts of his body he is washing, okay, and in that case you put les mains, hands. Il se lave les mains, okay, so that's possible, okay, you could say il se lave, but then in that case you don't really know, you know, what part of his body is washing, and in that case if you want to be more precise, il se lave les mains, okay, um, elle se lave, elle se lave, les mains, so it would be exactly the same way to proceed, okay? But then, be careful, because we've got some common and classical mistakes that students tend to make. <clears throat> uh, this is one thing that I've been seeing quite, uh, quite often. Elle se lave ses mains, okay? So in many situations, students tend to put here, so instead of what we saw, we saw it was les mains, they want to put the possessive, so they want to put ses mains, okay, which, I mean, it would be logical, I mean, why not, you know, but then unfortunately the, the French grammar say that no, it's not possible, so keep in mind that if you want to use the, this structure and put this complément d'objet direct after your verb, you should put the article here, les Okay, and don't use the possessive c'est. Okay, so you say elle se lave les mains, and you don't say elle se lave ses mains as we have 
or as we had here uh, before okay so it will be exactly the same thing here when you say tu te laves tes cheveux it's actually well it would be logical but then unfortunately that's not the way it goes you don't say that you will say as we saw tu te laves les so the article and then cheveux okay so remember don't put the possessive here when you get this type of structure okay so same thing je me lave mes dents well actually it's not possible but uh, you will say je me lave les dents okay so remember no possessive another thing to remember if you want to put le passé composé il s'est lavé and then il s'est lavé les mains okay so you will keep this structure it's actually quite simple il s'est lavé and then you put your complément d'objet direct after les mains elle s'est lavé so in that case if you look carefully as we saw previously you should put the feminine form here at the end okay because you are using être in that case but then look and that's the reason why you should be careful elle s'est lavé and then you don't put anything here okay so you take away your feminine form and you get your complément d'object direct after so elle s'est lavé les mains this is quite tricky many many persons tend to make the mistake and to put this feminine form here or it could be the plural as well but then in that case it's the feminine so take it away uh, don't put anything and keep your structure like that elle s'est lavé les mains so for instance in that case you've got elles se sont lavées so remember that well it's logical we use être and then we put the feminine form because it's the feminine and we put the plural form because it's the plural but remember this strange rule but still it's the it's a rule so you need to follow it it will go like that as well so elles se sont lavées and then you drop the feminine you drop the plural form you just put your participe passé like that okay and you continue your sentence with your complément d'objet direct les mains okay so elles se sont lavé les mains as i said phonetically if you speak it's not a problem because lavé you pronounce it like that and lavé same pronunciation so we don't hear that if you pronounce this form instead of this form it's not a problem because we don't we don't hear it okay if you want to write correctly keep in mind that you should drop the feminine and the plural in this type of structure when you've got le pronom uh, sorry le verbe pronominal réfléchi and le complément d'objet direct after i hope it was not too difficult uh, and useful have a great day au revoir et à bientôt Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 17, Leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll see together les verbes pronominaux and more precisely, les verbes pronominaux réciproques. Okay, so we saw previously, or in the previous video, les verbes pronominaux réfléchis. And in this video, we'll see les verbes pronominaux Reciproc. Okay, so let's start now. And uh, well, the good question that we could ask is what are les verbes pronominaux réciproques? So let's see. And the first thing that you should keep in mind is that you will need two persons. So la personne numéro un and then la personne numéro deux. Okay, and the concept is that la personne numéro un will do something that will affect la personne numéro deux and la personne numéro deux will do something that will affect la personne numéro un. Okay, and this is what we call les verbes pronominaux réciproques. Let's see an example. And one good example will be se 
parler. OK? So, when you get the sentence or the subject, and here the verbs, il se parle, OK? In that case, it's quite clear. They speak to each other, if you want to translate that directly. This is the concept. So, they speak or they talk to each other. And this is exactly the main, main concept of les verbes pronominaux réciproques. So, la personne numéro 1 parle à la personne numéro 2. La personne numéro 2 parle à la personne numéro 1. So, this cycle, okay, will actually symbolize, in a way, this concept of les verbes pronominaux réciproques. Okay? So, as we have two persons, la personne numéro 1 et la personne numéro 2, it means that le sujet est au pluriel. Okay, so the subject will need to be at the plural form, of course. Like we have here, il se parle, if you look, the subject is il and it's the plural form. Be careful because in some cases, well, let's say that it will be difficult in some cases to really understand. So, utilisation et compréhension parfois difficile. So, we'll, I will give you a good example here. You've got this thing. Il s'admire. Okay? S'admire, it's to admire. So, il s'admire. So, of course, you get the plural form and then it's verb pronominal. So, probably you could think that it's a verb pronominal réciproque. In, in this uh, example, but actually it is possible to have, of course, two persons, okay, because we've got, we've got the plural, but in, in this situation it would be also possible that the first and the second person, they admire only themselves, okay, so it's actually not as we saw previously you know, they admire each other, but it, it could mean, in that, in that uh, sense, it could mean that they admire themselves. And in this case, well, this il s'admire would be considered as a verb pronominal réfléchi. Okay? But then, of course, the same sentence can mean, as we saw previously, this concept of verb pronominal réciproque. So, la personne numéro un admire la personne numéro deux. And then la personne numéro 2 admire la personne numéro 1. And in that case, of course, the, the meaning will, would be a verb pronominal réciproque. So they admire each other. Okay? So it is tricky in some cases. Normally, it doesn't come like that. So normally, you've got a, con a con context. And normally, you, you tend to understand quite fast and quite well if it is pro, uh, verb pronominal uh, réfléchi or verb pronominal réciproque. Okay? So, but if it comes just like that without anything before or anything after, well, it can be tricky because as we saw, it, it can mean two different things. Okay? Um, be careful when we make the passé composé form because, of course, as we are using être here, okay, we will have to put at the end, well, whether the feminine or the plural. So when you get ils se sont regardés, so in this case, you will have to add this final s at the end because it's the plural. And then if you get the feminine form, elles se sont regardées, then you will get e for the feminine and then s for the plural form. Remember that uh, we don't pronounce them, so you will get phonetically regarder, and then here the same form, regarder. Okay, so you don't pronounce anything after your e, but still you should write them if you want to write correctly. Okay, so masculin pluriel, and then féminin pluriel. And this is it. I hope it was useful. Uh, we will continue a little bit in the next video with uh, les verbes pronominaux. Okay? But then, have a great day. Au revoir et à bientôt.
Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. Apprenez le français avec Vincent. And this is unité 17, leçon G. And in this lesson, we'll see together les verbes pronominaux and we'll continue. And this video, we'll see precise, more precisely les verbes pronominaux à sens passif. Okay, so the first question is, of course, what are they or what does it mean? Well, the main concept that you've got to keep in mind is that when we talk about le passif in French, it's actually quite strict in a way. We just want to express the fact that le sujet ne fait pas l'action. So the subject doesn't do the action. Okay, so I know it can be quite tricky. That's the reason why I want to give you un exemple here. Ce grand classique s'appelle Les Enfants du Paradis. So in that case, we want to talk about a movie, Les Enfants du Paradis, and it's a classical movie, so ce grand classique. So let's have a look at your sentence. Here you can see the verb. Okay? You can see that before the verb, you've got this S apostrophe, so it does mean that it is a verb pronominal. Okay, and then here, just before, you've got the subject, ce grand classique. But if you take one minute to look at the sentence, ce grand classique s'appelle les enfants du paradis, you can notice that actually the subject, ce grand classique, doesn't do the action. Because it's not possible, I mean the movie cannot call itself. And that's the whole concept of what we call le Passif, ok? And in that case, this verb pronominal s'appeler will be used, as we saw here, un sens passif. Ok? So, if we take a look again at the sentence, ce grand classique s'appelle les enfants du paradis, well, it could be possible to write it like that. Ce grand classique est appelé les enfants du paradis. And this is one interesting thing because now you notice that it is possible to use this verb appelé. So in that case you don't have this form pronominal, okay? You just have this form non pronominal, so appelé. And it's possible to use it at the passive form. Et appelé is called. Okay, so it would be possible in that case, and the good thing is that, well, in this situation, you notice that s'appeler, and then appeler, so you can use this verb pronominal s'appeler, instead of using the passive form est appelé. Okay, so it can be quite useful in some cases. So, ce grand classique est appelé les enfants du paradis. So, it would be an option, of course. Or then, it would be possible to use on appelle ce grand classique les enfants du paradis. Okay? And in this situation, you notice quite well that ce grand classique, well, actually is not doing the action. Okay? So, s'appeler, in that case, at the present form, can be used instead of a passive form, which is quite useful in a way, and it's quite good to remember that it's an option that you have instead of using le passif, in some cases, of course, not all the time. So, let's see few verbs that will be possible and will actually uh, work, uh, as we saw with the sapley. So, the first one is Sacheté, okay, and what I will give you, I will give you the translation, but I will only give you the by translation, so the translation for acheté, just for a good reason. If you look at the sentence, les médicaments s'achètent dans les pharmacies, well, it's exactly the same thing. You want to say that les gens achètent des médicaments, les médicaments, sorry, dans les pharmacies. And so the interesting thing is to know the meaning of acheté. Okay, because this is what we will have to use. So, les gens achètent les médicaments dans les pharmacies. Les médicaments s'achètent dans les pharmacies. So, s'acheter, s'appeler, s'apprendre, 
se comprendre, se concevoir, se construire. And let's see now the translations. S'acheter, s'appeler, s'apprendre, se comprendre, se concevoir, se construire. Okay, so all these verbs can be used as well as we saw as verbes pronominaux à sens passif. The list continues. Se corriger, se couper, se dire, se diviser, s'employer, s'entendre. Se corriger, se couper, se dire, se diviser, s'employer, s'entendre. S'exprimer, se faire, se former, se lire, se nommer, s'obtenir. S'exprimer. Se faire, se former, se lire, se nommer, s'obtenir. Se parler, se perdre, se porter, se pratiquer, se réaliser, se remarquer. Se parler, se perdre, se porter, se pratiquer, se réaliser, se remarquer. Se remplacer, se vendre, se voir, and that's it. Se remplacer. Se vendre, se voir. Okay, so remember that all the verbs that we've been or have been presenting uh, in this video, they can work as verbes pronominaux à sens passif. Okay, I hope it was clear. Have a great day and hope to see you soon. Au revoir et à bientôt.